Baby, be in love with your fantasies. I can be a star, make a sky so bright. Welcome to my dungeon. This is ecstasy. Let me play the fantasy. What's good, y'all? I'm your girl, Asia. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hello, hello, and welcome. Okay, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, smash notification bell so you don't miss any videos from your girl, okay? Today, as y'all can see from the thumbnail, I'm getting into something a little bit mysterious today. <laughs> don't laugh. I'm getting into something mysterious today, y'all. Um, this video actually came from the History Channel. Of course, we all know um, the History Channel. But this is Ancient Aliens. Y'all, I was like hooked on this show for a long time when I first discovered that it was there. But I don't know if... <laughs> I don't know if I actually seen anything about Antarctica. Y'all hear me talk about Antarctica all the time and the mysterious things that go on there, but I've never shown a video about it. So today we're getting into something new. Um, I'm excited to jump into this and show y'all something. I don't know. Y'all, y'all can see what y'all make of it, but this is Antar, uh, excuse me, ancient aliens, crystal city discovered under Antarctica. Okay, and again, this came from the History Channel. I'll be sure to link this in the description if y'all want to check it out. Um, but let's go ahead and jump into it. Here we go. August 1946. Esteemed U.S. Naval officer and explorer Admiral Richard Byrd, one of the first pilots to fly over both the North and South Poles, organizes Operation High Jump, the largest expedition ever to travel to Antarctica. With 13 ships, 23 aircraft, and over 4,700 military personnel. This That's was very important that after the conclusion of World War II, Admiral Byrd was asked if he would mount a large armada and go for four months. It was supposed to be that they would go in December, January, February, and March and there was a list of military goals that they were to achieve. But by the end of February, something happened. One of the mission's official goals was investigating sites for potential military bases in Antarctica. But during his explorations, Admiral Byrd allegedly came upon something highly unexpected. Y'all, and I just got to tell y'all, if y'all haven't checked out Richard Byrd before, if y'all haven't ever looked into his his diaries his information y'all should y'all should look into him just saying this story is said to come from his diaries not his published account of the trip but something he held back and then later was suppressed by government authorities that found it frightening of course they would in his diary which was discovered by his son after his death admiral Byrd tells an extraordinary story Admiral Byrd heard there was an entrance to the center of the Earth through the South Pole. <laughs> and he took planes into the South, under the South Pole. And when he did that, he discovered that as he flew over the pole, suddenly he's looking at things that shouldn't be there. I mean, it was temperate. He and his squadron flew under the Earth. In now, why the hell would he go and do that? I'm not flying in a hole, okay? I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'm just saying, y'all, I wouldn't have never discovered that because I'm just going to fly over the hole, okay? I mean, it was temperate. He and his squadron flew under the earth, into the earth. It turns into this lush and green area, and he can't even believe his eyes. But that's just the beginning of his extraordinary story. He tells how all of a sudden he starts to see a shimmering rainbow city that's made of crystal his airplane is taken control of when he suddenly sees these flying disc-shaped objects around uh -oh. him that lead him to the ground. Whereupon he's escorted into a cavernous type of an area where he meets a being he refers to as the master in his diary. Nope. The master tells I don't want to talk to the master, y'all. Don't take me to the master, okay? I don't... Mm -mm. I, let me skip that part. I'll I just go back outside. I'm, I'm going to go back 
the way I came. Okay. Put me back so I can fly my way out. However y'all brought me down here, put me back up there. <laughs> Tells him that they're highly disappointed in what humans are doing with nuclear weapons and how they've recently destroyed Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And they really are concerned about what is going on on the surface of the planet. They tell Admiral Byrd that they hope that humanity will ultimately stop this. For UFO researchers, this account from Admiral Byrd's diary is particularly significant due to the fact that the modern UFO era began right after World War II and the detonation of the first atomic bombs. Mm -hmm. It has also been noted that a high number of UFO sightings have been reported in the vicinity of nuclear missile silos. Admiral Byrd's story is congruent with the stories that we hear from numerous uh, accounts of angelic or extraterrestrial type beings that are very concerned about what humanity is doing with nuclear weapons. Just ask the Air Force officers at the U.S. missile silos, the nuclear missile silos, that have seen their silos and their nuclear arms disarmed by what are perceived to be extraterrestrial beings. They are very concerned that we are ultimately not just going to destroy ourselves, but could harm our planet, which is their world as well. If Admiral Byrd's secret diary is authentic, does it reveal not only that there are highly advanced beings living inside the Earth, but also that they are monitoring what happens on the surface. According to the diary, after this incredible encounter, Admiral Byrd was eager to share his story, but was ordered to remain silent. <laughs> Of course. Bird comes back after this experience. He is taken to a government compound where he is told that he is never to speak of this publicly and that everything he says is, is classified. Could Admiral Bird's story point to a profound connection between the ancient traditions of strange beings living inside the Earth and the modern day UFO phenomenon? Ancient astronaut theorists say yes and believe we may be fast approaching the time when we will find ourselves face to face with the beings of inner earth. I don't know if we ever gonna like get to that point though. You know, like one thing that I always like, I'm pretty sure of <laughs> because I've like looked into a lot of this kind of stuff y'all. I don't know weirdly enough, but I 1,000% I think that they're most attracted to, like, the whole nuclear thing. Like, everything that has anything to do with nuclear weapons, bombs, that kind of thing, always attracts them. Like, if you hear the stories, you you watch the videos, like, these crazy little alien videos, like, they always come out when that kind of stuff happens. So, oddly enough, this was right after World War II, but you see what he was talking about with the nuclear bombs, like all of a sudden, like they don't like what we're doing. And yeah, I don't know. I wonder how long, like if he talks about how long he was actually down there in this dang on hold, because I'd be, I'd be wanting to know everything, you know, obviously he probably came back and told somebody clearly, but what else did he say? Like he couldn't have possibly wrote down everything in the diary, not everything, <laughs> just say it. So, I don't know. Y'all tap in. Let me know what y'all think about this down in the comment section. Should we go deep diving and delving into um, the stories, the mysterious stories of Antarctica? Y'all let me know down below in the comment section. And if y'all enjoyed this, give me a big thumbs up, like, comment, subscribe, smash notification bell so you don't miss any videos from your girl. And if ain't nobody else told you, I love you. And I'm going to see y'all in the next video. Y'all. <laughs> Bye, y'all.